Sunday roasts are a thing of absolute joy, so I've put a bundle together that I know you're gonna love. Hi guys, hope you're well. We're gonna make roast beef. People love it and I love it. It's a wonderful treat. I'm gonna show you how to prepare this, do the trivet. We're gonna cook it, we're gonna rest it, and we're gonna carve it and it's gonna be absolutely amazing. I've got three cuts of beef here that are very, very common. I've got the top side of beef. That's the most affordable and it's leaner. We've got the sirloin of beef here. Now you know the sirloin steak, but this is a chunk to roast. It's easy to carve, quicker to cook, and it's always tender and then roast four rib of beef. It will easily serve 10 people and the leftovers of all of this is amazing. So the preparation is the same for all three cuts. Top side of beef I'm gonna do. And what's really important is get your meat out of the fridge one hour before you wanna cook it. And that way it will stay juicier and more tender. Give it a little drizzle with some olive oil. Give it a nice little rub up. And then I wanna season it quite generously with salt and pepper. Rub it over and just roll the meat all over the seasoning. Put a little oil into a tray. Let's get that on a high heat. And first of all, I just want to get some colour on this beef and start to sear it. Now what you'll notice is the top side is very lean. But if we look at the sirloin and the forib, I wouldn't have to add oil to that. I would score the fat like this and I will place it fat side down in a pan and render the beef fat. Once you feel you've got a little bit of colour, get some tongs and turn it over. Now while this is browning off, I want to make a trivet and just clank up some celery, about half a celery, one onion, a whole bulb of garlic, and then two carrots just cut into big chunks. And then herb-wise, I love using a few bay leaves and some rosemary. All of this goes in. Now this trivet is going to do two things. First of all, it soaks up all the juices from the beef and it creates the basis for the most incredible gravy or jus to go with your roast beef. Secondly, you can see you put the beef on top so that way it's not frying on the bottom of the tray. This top side of beef is gonna go straight into the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 Fahrenheit for an hour and a quarter. So for all the cooking times for the beef or any other cut of meat, then just click over to jamieoliver.com and I've got a whole load of stuff that will support you. Get it absolutely right every single time. So look at that, really beautiful. Let it rest for half an hour. If it's an even bigger cut of meat, let it go 40 minutes, 45 minutes. When you're roasting meats or even grilling meats, you know, that heat is pushing the moisture into the middle, right? So you need to let it rest just so the moisture comes back, right? So it's juicier and more tender and, and it just lets it get to a better temperature. Have a look in this tray. All this love is gonna be the basis of your gravy. Put it onto a high heat, add some flour. A heaped tablespoon will go in so we get a nice thick gravy. Then just squeeze all the beautiful garlic out of the skins. I can mush up the onions. I'm gonna use a little red wine, just a little half glass, goes in, roast beef, red wine. It makes sense, right? The smell is absolutely amazing. The little secret ingredient that I love is just some beautiful jam. That little sweetness really helps the gravy sing really, really nicely. About a litre of stock goes in, bring this to the boil, and then simmer this for about half an hour, the same time you rest the meat, and it's gonna be delicious. In the half an hour that it's taken for the beef to rest, lots of beautiful things happen. If you see in our little platter here, you get juices that come out. You put those juices into your gravy. Pour that gravy through a coarse sieve. You look how gorgeous and thick and wonderful that gravy is. One little tip on the gravy, if you just pull it to the side of the gas hob, as it boils, it will push any kind of fatty bits or any scummy bits to one side. And you can get rid of that. And we've got lovely boiling gravy then let's talk about the meat. Now when it comes to the carving, you know, with a sirloin or a forib, it's very, very tender. You know, with a top side, it will be tender, but it is a little bit leaner, so we want to go nice and fine. You need to invest in a nice, long carving knife. So get the carving knife and do nice, long strokes. Go as thin as you can, so you can see this beef is nice, juicy and blushing. If you cook it 15 minutes less, you can go medium rare. This is medium. Look at that. What a joy. Absolutely beautiful. And of course, no roast is finished without roast potatoes and Yorkshire puddings. This is the kind of food that just makes you so happy. I've got some horseradish sauce, which is one of my favorites. Beautiful. And then hot gravy, gorgeous, dark, rich gravy. So good. It's not right unless you fill up the Yorkshire pudding. 
with gravy. Come on. So look at that, guys. The most incredible roast beef for all the trimmings. If you want the recipes for the Yorkshire puddings, the perfect roast potato, the horseradish, then go to jamieolive.com where the recipes are and thousands more. There you go, guys. Fill your boots and get cooking. So lovely people, everyone knows how to roast a chicken, but I have got a method that takes it up three notches. Are you interested? Let's do this. Let's talk about the shopping. Chicken. This is a hundred day old chicken. You'll easily serve six to eight people beautifully. Slightly smaller. This is a label on glaze. It's been corn fed a little bit. You can see the colour. We've got a little poussin here, right? Corn fed again. And then here, we've got an organic chicken. Delicious. So the one I'm going to do is a nice little label on glaze. First up, finely chop some herbs. I've got some marjoram here, parsley, basil, seasoned with salt and pepper. Add a nice couple of lugs of olive oil. Mix it up. The oil will help bring out all the natural flavors and oils from the herbs. And then we're gonna get our chicken. If you can get a dry plucked chicken, the skin is so crispy and it's delicious. What I wanna do is just run my knife around the top of the legs and score that skin like that. And then just pop that little ball joint. Take the end of the chicken leg off and when it cooks and roasts, it just looks beautiful. Put the chicken on its side and I want this thigh meat to cook at the same rate and speed as the breast meat. So I'm simply just gonna do three confident slices down to the bone. And it also allows your flavored oil to get in there. With the breast, right, I want you to be very, very careful. Here is the end of the skin. I want you to pull it towards you so you don't tear it. And just get your finger in between the skin and the breast. Make a little pouch and then I'll use a little spatula to get right down there. Divide these herbs by half. And again, I don't want to tear that chicken skin. Wonderful, look at that. Just get two slices of butter and I'll ram these down the chicken breast. So that's gonna make your chicken breast juicier than ever. It's gonna make that skin crispier than ever. There's one other trick that I've got, uh, lemon. Now if I put a cold lemon in there, the hot air is not gonna get in and it's not gonna be kind of cooking as even as I'd like it. So we've got a hot lemon that I'm gonna just stab and this is basically a boiling hot citrus Time bomb. Now, we're gonna tie this bird up. Take a little bit of our butcher's string, get it in half, put it just under the legs like this, take it up to these little notches here, and I'm gonna do a little knot. Tighten it up, go in between the breast and the legs, turn it over, you do another little knot, and it's just gonna keep it in shape, and it means you get a nice, neat, even cook. With all the kind of remnants of the oil and the herbs, you rub that all over the chicken. And it's really a spectacular thing. Into a tray we go, a whole bulb of garlic, two onions, cut those in half. I'm gonna cook it at 225 degrees Celsius for one hour. It's gonna be spectacular. Look, look, look at that. You know it makes sense. Oh, good. The string holds it all together, but you know that that chicken's done when you can pull the meat off the bone and when the juices run nice and brown. And if you look in here, you can just take the skins off these bits of onion. We're gonna have the best, best gravy. I'll put this heat on. Add just a heaped tablespoon of flour. Just mush it all up. You don't even need stock. Just top it up with some water. Bring that to the boil. This, of course, is the time where you let the chicken rest you finish your gravy, and that's when you bring your salad or your greens or your potatoes all together. So let's sieve out all of those chunks. Mega flavor. Take a little ladle and push it through. Look at that. Bring it back up to the boil, and you're gonna have an amazing gravy. Let's look at our lovely chicken. See how crispy that skin is, how the herbs are trapped. Really, really nice. Let's have a little carve up. First up, run the knife around the back of the leg and just click it, and it will just fall apart. Cut it across like that giving you that beautiful drumstick and that wonderful thigh meat. If there's any little juices that come out, don't be afraid just to pour those back into your gravy because it's all flavor, juices galore. When it comes, of course, to the breast, let's just take a nice little chunk here. You can see the herbs underneath. You can see the gorgeous, crispy, golden skin. You can see that the breast meat is juicy, juicy, juicy. That's what it's about, guys. The smell at this point from the lemon is phenomenal. It's fragranced the whole of this amazing chicken. This lovely gravy over the top of the chicken like this, wonderful. 
So that, my friends, is a classic roast chicken to savour and enjoy. The gravy is amazing, the skin is crispy, the herbs and that juicy, juicy meat. Enjoy, happy roasting, take care. Guys, we're gonna do a beautiful roast lamb, easy gravy. We're gonna do an amazing Italian version of a kind of mint sauce that you're gonna absolutely love. So first things first, got a leg of lamb from your butchers. If you love good food, it's all about the leg. Now flavours, um, rosemary, beautiful. Just pick off some little sprues, rosemary and lamb, two peas in a pod, really, really good. Three cloves of garlic, slice the garlic like that. Got a the garlic there. Got our rosemary there, and there's one more flavour that's absolutely going to divide you people, but you've got to trust me, anchovies. Now some of you will be going, oh I don't like anchovies, they smell fishy and all that old business. It's not there to be like a particular flavour, it's there to be a seasoning. If you're clever about it, you'll never ever taste it. Slice up the anchovy into like little thin bits. So there's your three flavours. Then if you look at the leg of lamb here, can you see how it's kind of red here and white here? And that's basically where the separate little bits of meat kind of join. So what I want to do quite sort of, you know, bravely is get the tip of this knife here and just stick it in and give it a little twist up in between those little gaps. And then you can stick your finger in and then get one little piece of anchovy, one little piece of rosemary and one little fleck of garlic. And what happens in these is when the lamb cooks, the fat kind of starts to melt. That makes the, the rosemary fry and the anchovy completely disperses into sort of like a juice. And of course the garlic sort of thundering away, giving it a good old hum of flavour. You can even nick some of this anchovy oil and just put a little bit over the top and have a good old slap around. Get yourself some salt and a little pepper. Look at that, beautiful leg of lamb. Put your roasted meat on top of the rack now. The hot air can kind of get all around the lamb and roast the whole thing quite evenly. What we can do is we can prepare for the most incredible gravy. Get two or three onions, peel them, half them, slice them up. As that lamb cooks, all the lovely sort of sticky goodness comes out of it. And things like onions, when they roast, or slowly cooked, they go sweet and delicious and sort of jammy and gorgeous. So I'm gonna put um, all the leftover bits of garlic, anchovy, rosemary, and all of the onions. I'm gonna put that straight into the tray. Cook it for an hour, hour and a half. That is gonna give us the preparation to make an incredible and easy gravy. Look at that, beautiful. So we've got all those lovely, sweet, caramelized onions and stuff. Get rid of as much fat as you can, and you'll be left with about a tablespoon in the tray. Looking good. All we have to do to make this gold now is like a heaped tablespoon of flour. I'm gonna whack it straight on a medium high heat. I'll break that frying with half a wine glass of red wine. So give it a little shake up. The wine will cook away. You can see immediately it's starting to thicken. This is like the secret ingredient uh, with any dark meat. A little bit of jam like this going in will just bring all of those flavours together. It's going to be really, really good. And I'll give it a little move around like this. Pint of chicken stock. And then you have a lovely onion gravy. So I'm going to turn it down to sort of medium low. It will start ticking away. When it looks good, it's ready to eat. You might just want to season it with salt and pepper. Let's come back to this lamb here. You can actually pour out any juice straight in the gravy that will help to give it flavour and thicken it. So, what I want to do for this lamb is make a really good sauce. It's called Salsa Verde. If you like mint sauce, this is another world. I'm going to use a little chopper, bunch of mint, parsley, a little half clove of garlic, one anchovy fillet, one little gherkin in there, capers, just a tiny little teaspoon. What I want to do is just chop it up You can see in there that's nice and fine, nice and rustic. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of good olive oil, a little teaspoon of mustard, a pinch of salt and pepper, and a swig 
of red wine vinegar, about a teaspoon and a half, right? And honestly, it turns literally everything you put it on savoury into something beautiful. So salsa verde is done, the lamb is done. I'm serving this beautiful dish with some smashed vegetables, swede and potatoes. Push that down up there to one side. Bosh, my lovely roast lamb, like that. We've got beautiful gravy. A lovely new look at roast lamb, smashed veg, salsa verde and beautiful onion gravy. Gorgeous. So I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect pork belly. And it's a tough one. How do you get that incredible crackling, but then melt in your mouth, tender, juicy, gorgeous pork belly, right? A nice hunk of that, right? That's what I'm gonna give you. So guys, let's start with the pork. Go to your butchers. You want a free range bit of pork. Look for marbling. And this fat will mostly render out, but the journey out kisses, looks after, takes care of the meat. Why am I doing a big chunk? Well, leftovers from this are gonna be amazing. Whether you freeze it, fridge it, use it within the week after, it's gonna be amazing. And I'm gonna show you how to score it. Now there's a little secret weapon, Stanley knife. So get a Stanley knife, change the blade. I don't want your grubby old blade from doing your DIY. And what's good about this is the fact that this blade can go up and down and it clicks, right? And we know that we can click that down and that's gonna go through the skin and score and you're not gonna get into that meat which means that juiciness is optimised, okay? I'm gonna go down the middle and I'm gonna score all the way down, take the skin and I'm just gonna score it maybe every centimetre, almost like herringbone. So that's one side done. But what you'll notice is as I open it up, can you see that kind of concertina out? Heat can get in quicker, flavour can get in more. This is gonna be amazing. Turn it around, so score it up around here as well. And then I wanna make a flavoured salt. It's a really exciting part of cooking. We're gonna use lovely spices and herbs. First one is coriander seeds, then fennel seeds, then black pepper. Two tablespoons each and two tablespoons of sea salt. Then two bay leaves. Pull out that little central stalk here and bash it. Now is the time to use it. Rub it in, all the little crooks and crannies. Let it get in there. So I've added a little bit of olive oil there, and that little bit of oil helps the rendering. But I want to brush off the seasoning from the skin now, brush it off, because it's inside there. And let's get four lovely white onions. Leave the skin on, and I'm going to cut it into quarters. This is going to roast as a trivet under the pork. And the skin stops the onions from scalding. So use the onion to prop up the pork. You want it all to roughly be on the same plane, and then it's going to go into the oven at full whack, which is roughly around 230 degrees Celsius or 250, which is about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That takes about 40 minutes to an hour. Then I'll show you what to do next. In the meantime, I am gonna get soap and I'm gonna just clean this place down. It is gonna be spick and span, and that includes me. The pork is looking amazing. And as that crackling's just getting perfect, I wanna clank up a load of veg. We've got lovely potatoes to leave the skin on. Chunk them up into like inch chunks. In it goes. And then we'll do exactly the same with the fennel and the carrots. Got some celery here as well. Take some herbs, like rosemary. A whole bulb of garlic, leave the skin on. Just literally break it up. So season it with salt and pepper, then give it a really good mixing. But there's no oil here. So what we're gonna do is take the pork out of the oven. Look at that, come on! We have crackling, but now we have to change attitude towards the cooking because high heat gives you crackle, but it's gonna make this meat underneath tough. So now we're gonna go to the oven and we're gonna turn it down to 150 degrees Celsius, which is about 300 Fahrenheit, okay? So we've gone from high to low cooking. This is the genius. What we have underneath um, listen to that crackling. Oh. So what we have here, ladies and gents, is the potential for the most amazing homemade gravy. People are gonna go nuts for this. We have already got guaranteed crunchy crackling, right? So I wanna guarantee you tenderness. So we're gonna do that by another brilliant technique that I love. So I'm gonna take this pork, put it straight onto the bars, put it back sort of towards the top of the oven. The veg goes underneath and literally that fat as it melts out of the pork belly is gonna rain over all those beautiful veggies. It's gonna be incredible. Cook it for about three to four hours at 150 degrees Celsius, which is about 300 Fahrenheit. And you'll know when it's cooked when that meat just pulls apart and it's beautiful. 
We are at the end of the story, the best bit, right? When everything comes out, we have an amazing gravy. It smells so good in here. This recipe is rock solid. It's gonna look after you. And what's nice is as that pork cooked and rained fat onto these incredible veggies, I just mixed it up every now and again, like every hour. Look at that, just amazing. Wow, incredible crackling, outrageous. Oh my Lord, come on. Right, enough talking, let's get into the pork. Look at that, come on man. Just incredible. Tender, juicy, if I squeeze it, just juice galore. Really amazing. You have got these ribs here, and look how much meat will come off these. Just absolutely beautiful, look at that. Wow, just absolutely beautiful. Oh, right, I'm peaking too soon. Time to plate up a portion. So caramelized and delicious. Come on. Oh, yes, you know it makes sense. Let's try that. Mm. So good. The flavor of the pork is amazing. Tender as you like. Crunch. Mm. The veg is so tasty. So guys, please don't just watch this and do nothing. Go shopping tomorrow. Go buy some pork belly. Click the link, get the recipe. Take care.